You, what is the crack, Chris? How What's happening? You? What's happening? I am fucking super excited to get you on here today and tell these people the story. Because, like, look, just so that these guys know what they're in for, what were you doing before you got into fitness? Give us, like, a, a, a sort of a backstory of what, what your life went from and to what you're doing now. Well, before fitness, basically, it was just farming 24-7. Hated life. Hated every fucking day. And it was just shit. It was just basically pretty fucking shit the whole time. Well, there goes the no cursing thing. Now I definitely can't advertise this fucking thing now. So, like, fuck it. You said fucking shit. I mean, so, like, hold on. You were fa- farming. Like, what? Yeah. what what's that? Uh, basically, just milking cows for a living. Holy Jesus. Right, okay. I'm, okay, at what point in your life did you say to yourself, this is not what I want to be doing? And why did, Why was it fitness you wanted to get into? Well, obviously, I think I think every PT gets into the business uh, because they fall in love with training, first and foremost, so then they start to get more into it, you know, but I think just uh, just waking up in those cold, shitty mornings, what the fuck am I doing in my life? Um, it just, you, you look, you look, I always look 20 years ahead, and I see if I want to do that for the rest of my life, and if I don't, I won't do it. If I do, I will do it, and that's the kind of way I, I judge it. That's the kind of way I, I went with it then. Gotcha. Okay, and... Um- like, when did you actually come into Elite? Because where you are now, you're running your own gym, right? Yeah. Okay, how long did that take? What, when, when did you come and do the course and what, what's the crack? I done the course in July 2018 and exactly now coming on a year and six months later, I'm now, that, that's, I'm at the gym now where I'm at capacity. I'm at capacity. That's pretty fucking cool. Hold up. Pretty good. Hold up. Yeah. Wait a minute. So yeah, like a year ago, and this is why I wanted to bring you on, Chris, because in one year, you've gone from, like, you were milking cows and shit, right? Saying you fucking hate a life. Decided to yourself, right, this is not what I want to do for the next 20 years. Decided you'll come and do the course here. And actually, I remember you, because in the business day, you were like, I'm, I'm going to launch a gym, and I'm going to come back to you for some business coaching and shit. I'm going to come back to you for help. And I, now, some people do say that. Like, there's, some, there's a couple of people in Ascension right now at the minute that say the exact same thing. And when people say that to me, I was, you know, you can go to yourself, nah, he's never fucking coming back. And I, I wasn't too sure about you, Chris, I'm honest. I was like, I don't know, is he going to come back? But to see, like, the, what you've done in, in the past, because you've only started working with us in the self and Jason inside of the Ascension since what, August, September? It's about September, I think, August, around that, yeah, around that, around that time. Okay, so tell me, what was, how has things changed since you started working with us in the sense? And tell these people, a year ago, you did the course. What happened then and what's happened now? Well, from the course, obviously, qualified. Um, I was trying, couldn't find a job in any gym. Got finally a job uh, freelancing out of a gym in, in November. Then that, that went pretty well. I got my client base fairly quick there. And around, kind of, it was around the May Around the May time um, this year, just gone, I started looking at getting a new gym. An opportunity came up that I literally could not turn down. And like that, then I started doing up the place myself. That was all grants. But then a month, I think it was a month, a month and a half out, is when I kind of started panicking. I said, right, I've no fucking nothing really in, in, in play. <laughs> What's happening? Is is gone. Oh, fuck. Is he back? It's the difference, and there's no doubt. You, can you hear us, Chris, yeah? You fucking yeah, but, yeah, but, He had a speed wobble. So listen, where you finished off there before you went speed wobbly, <laughs> you said, listen, you were, you, you had your place, you were about a month and a half out, and then you said, oh, fuck. Yeah. What happened oh, there? Fuck, yeah. Oh, <laughs> fuck. As in, I didn't have no no structure in place, and that's when I reached out to Sean, because I obviously knew, I know he's done the group and stuff, so I knew what the group was about. And yeah, since then, like, there's no things in doubt. There's no like indecisions. It's just all action, and it kind of it just it escalates a lot quicker than when there's actions in place. Gotcha. Okay. Well, look, a lot of people are going to be interested in that stuff, but I know because there's a wide variety of people here in the EFT coaches community, and a lot of them are going to be starting out. So, look, if we can go back to the bit where you like you walked out of a leap here, you said it was November. And went yeah. into this where you, you found it hard to get a job. Tell us a wee bit about those struggles because that, that's going to be something that a lot of people can relate to, like yeah. where they're trying to get themselves placed. What, what kind of things did you come up against and how did you get over it? Well, like from the space of like July, the end of July to the start of November, there was, I was literally job hunting everywhere. Um, couldn't get anywhere. That's probably the one thing because I'm, I'm down the loud. So like there's no real opportunities as, as big as it would be in Dublin, say. So there's no PT gyms really. There's only one or two around here. It's not major. So the opportunity is very slim and couldn't find any of And then eventually a new gym opened up beside me and I freelanced out of that. And then basically I knew I had to build up a client base before I even started looking at it. So I got that base going 
and then now the now the PT gym's going and it's going well because there's nothing really in competition around me. So I kind of hit a good area, a good you time. Did. Well, look, you, you said there there was no jobs going. How long were you job hunting here? About three or four months solid, just couldn't okay. find anything. Like, yeah. And you wouldn't give up. Look, like here's the thing: a lot of people who want to get started in fitness, and I think a lot of people in Dublin are fucking spoiled, where they think that these jobs are gonna fall in their lap. Whereas I love hearing like the perseverance you had there. Three months, you're like banging on doors looking for opportunities. Tell, yeah. describe how that went for you. Like, what what was going through your mind? Like, well, the, the first thing I actually done because the gym where I used to go to in, in draw that I um I got on to them about possibly like renting out of that gym, and I I advertised and all this crack didn't get a single fucking client, didn't get anything. No one was interested. Nothing was happening. And so I'm like, I was like, right, that's not working. Let's scrap that. And then eventually went on look more other gyms. But again, just wasn't successful. Nothing was happening. I just wasn't getting any luck. And then all of a sudden, two thing, two opportunities came up straight away, and I took one of them, and it, it's been great since. Um, but one thing on that as well, like obviously three or four months job hunting was difficult. But as well as as well as that, when your partner, the, the partners are very positive to you sometimes, but then other times when there's no cash flow coming in, they're kind of like, would you not just go get a nine to five job like everyone else? And you're kind of like, no, I'm not going to get a fucking nine to five job. I won't do this because down the line the reward is going to be better. So, and it's paid off, lucky enough, it's paid off. Brilliant, brilliant. But I can relate with that. Like, I mean, yeah, if there's no money coming in and you're following this dream, you, you do, you need support of people behind you who are like, you know, you're doing this for the right reasons. Well, look, what, what was it? Was it, why did you persevere? Like in the back of your mind, did you have a vision of, of the future? Yeah. You were, right, okay, well, describe that to me. What was it you had that kept you going? Well, obviously, before I we went to Elise, it kind of you're, you're stepping in and you're kind of going into the unknown, so you're not really sure what's going on. But as as the time through Elise starts going on, and so especially when you step out, you kind of see the way gyms are doing things, and you're kind of like, I do that differently, and you do it better, hopefully, like as well. And yeah, even now, like I, I do believe that thinking and thinking down long run and envisioning it does actually pay off. And um, yeah, like the visions haven't stopped then since they're still growing. There's, there's a lot more, lot more that I want to accomplish as well now as well. Well, looking back, because I know a lot of people kind of struggle with the fear of getting into fitness. You know, they're worried. What would you say to anybody who has the kind of vision like yourself, but they're kind of worried or maybe they don't have a supportive partner? What would you say to those people? I'd say, like, that's normal. It's normal to be scared. Like, it's, if you're not used to that and if you're jumping into that unknown, it's normal. If, I always say if there's no fear there, it's, 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 not, it's not big enough. And you, I know you said it's the exact same things. Like, it's, if it doesn't scare you, then it's not big enough. It has to be big. Uh, to, to be able to achieve something big as well at the same time um, but like it always pays off it always pays off you take that jump you take that risk it will come back and, and it will reward you big time deadly okay well where, where is the gym what, what's it called tell these people what where you are now and how you got so the, the gym name is called Freedom Studios um, I'm basically just doing semi-private training it's in Trumcar County Loud and it's basically in between draw that and in between the dog. So it's kind of in no the middle. No idea what the fuck that is, man. I'm no, my geography is shit. Like, where the fuck is that? <laughs> you know when you're driving up the motorway and you leave Dublin and then it starts to smell like the countryside? Oh, yeah. You're that's, driving to Belfast. Yeah. That's where it is. Ah, exactly. now I'm Dublin, Belfast. I mean, you're like, ah, oh, <laughs> man. I'm close to Chris. <laughs> yeah, this is where Chris is hanging out. <laughs> Isn't that right, Chris? That's true. Yeah, it is. It is right. Yeah, it is right. <laughs> oh, okay well here here's another thing i want to know you, you said you got into the gym after this like long job hunt you know fucking there's the message going which i just get a nine to five all this stuff right but you have this vision of the future and you're believing in it and you're persevering how did you actually get your first clients what like did you have any knowledge or understanding or what gave you the confidence to go out and get your first class and how did you do it but this is the thing that I always say to people as well, um, and why the reason why I sent my, my, my first member of staff up to you is to get educated as well, is because I walk obviously walking in a gym with other person trainers who've got other qualifications. The minute I walked in, I automatically felt as in I was twenty or thirty steps ahead of them straight away, just from being educated from elite in terms of like the just being in a live gym, like like you all say, Sean, being in a live gym twenty four seven. The business side of things as well, just educated in general. I was just about 20, 30 steps ahead of them straight away instantly. And that gave me the platform to get clients quicker than them. And then that just grew me every time, quicker, quicker every time. Okay. Well, and were you, how did you initiate that first conversation to get a client? Like, what happened? Did you approach somebody? What the fuck? How did it go down? Well, yeah. If, if, if I was to think now in my, with my ads, adverts right now to my adverts at the start, they're obviously big fucking difference, like in terms of the way it's done. But, um, 
I can't remember how it first started. Just obviously the usual shit, putting stuff, putting posts up on Facebook, one making the client come to you. Whereas obviously now I changed it up. Now I'm going after the client as such, and it's working out more successful. But back then, yeah, it was okay. It was. It's never going to work long term. And even now, some PTs come to me and ask me for like advice on the ads and stuff. And I say to them, like, I, I tell them what to do with the ads in terms of how to tweak them up. Um, but they're still not that successful. So I don't know why it's working for me and not them. There's obviously missing something still there. But, um, not an ascension, man. Basically, yeah. Basically, yeah, yeah. They're not in the A team. Yeah. Yep, they need to join a fucking A team. Okay, well, tell us. So you've got you got your initial first clients. What were the what were the, some of the things that, you know, you were struggling with or what made you realize you needed to reach out and ask for help? Um, I suppose the main thing is, like, it's keeping the clients is the biggest thing because, like, a lot of them come in a client always comes in just really thinking about, oh, let me do this six week or short. It's all short, uh, long term stuff, short, short stuff that they're looking to do. But you actually want them in long term in order for you to grow as a business and as a PT, you know. So keeping them in, in, in the gym is probably the most difficult thing because, again, you have to flip the switch. They're coming in and looking for short term, but you're trying to educate them and tell them that, look, maybe it's actually a two or three year plan, this thing that's not actually a short little fix. So I think over time as well, sales, obviously, you know yourselves when I was hassling you for a long time about like shitting myself basically with the sales and stuff because I, I think everyone's uncomfortable with sales at the start but now to be honest it just it comes just comes the more you do them the more you're better off with them and the same with the phone calls the more sales and phone calls the more comfortable you get with them as well so that's kind of the main things like sweet and what was one of the biggest things you struggled with and because uh, uh, here's the thing like you you went from a dude rent space in a gym where you got your own clients and then you decided right I want to get my own facility. Okay, you, you came to us, but like looking back at what you were doing then versus what you're doing now, what are some of the mistakes that you've seen that you were making that some trainers could learn from? I think the biggest thing is, um, I always say, I hate, I hate seeing it kind of as well, but see, like a, a PT always promotes themselves, like training and stuff, like on a business page, whereas it should be just about the business. You shouldn't be about the client and all that type of stuff. And a lot of PTs I see now may make mistakes now, but I do on my personal page, not on my gym page now. But like a lot of them actually do it on the business page where they're promoting themselves and not the business. And that's a big mistake I see as well because nobody gives a fuck about what they can do, whereas they care, the client care more about what the result they're going to get. And that, that's a big mistake I see is, is happening big time now. Great point. That is a cracker. Like we talk about this when we do the business stuff in, in Elite. Like I always say, no one gives a fuck about your squat PR or your food porn. You know, when you, and, and that's an important point. A lot of people need to think from the eyes of the client looking at your page. If it's all about you, they're kind of going, well, what the, like, like, all they can see is your own self interest rather than like, what can you do for them? So I think that's a really important part. Yeah, big time, big okay. time, yeah. Okay. Well, if, if you had like a couple of pieces of advice, to give to the young, and I know we're only talking a year here, this, which you've done a lot in a year. You've went out, got them. How many clients did you have in your busiest, in your busiest time? At, at the minute, um, you know, and when you were renting space, oh, fucking fifteen, probably 10, 15 max. Okay, 10, 15. You would have been making good money though, would you? It's okay. It was more like it was the boot campy type thing. It was more the the one to ones were struggling, but it was more the the groupies that was kind of getting more going. Um, whereas now there's no comparison to now, like nothing. Okay, gotcha. Well, then, so you, you, what pieces of advice would you give, even though it's only a year? Because you've done a lot in a year. You went from like boot camp shit. Like, well, what's your business doing now in terms of revenue? How much has it grown? It's grown big time. Um, like, at the minute, I'm currently setting 55 members in the gym. Fucking 55 goal. members? 15 to 55. Yeah. Yeah. 15 Fuck me, 15 boot camp people to now 55 members and your gym costs is what, about 180, 200 quid a month? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have 55 people at 200 quid a month? Yeah. That's fucking nice revenue. Yeah, it's going, it's going good. And I the goal obviously coming into the new year as well is I want to double all that now. So I want to double me um, meet me clients as well. Now. That's the next goal. Okay, so you want to get 100 members at 200 quid. You want to get the 20k a month revenue? Yeah. Okay, so you want to go for a quarter million next year? I do. <laughs> no way! Fucking love it. Okay, well, I want to ask you before we go on, like how, how you did that. <laughs> yeah. What were, if you had three pieces of advice to give to the younger Chris, or even because this will apply to everybody who's listening, like trainers who want to do what you've done, 
And we'll yeah. wonder, how the fuck have you done it in such a short period of time? Because they would want to do that too. What were the pieces of advice you would give to the younger self? To a younger self, I give me advice as in like, don't, like, number one is don't be afraid. I know I, oh, people all say about the fear, but it's, don't be afraid of the of the fear because jumping into that fear is, is where it's going to actually, you're going to evolve as a person as well. Um, it's a big time, as well as, as well as a PT and stuff. I find the more, the more, more I'm coaching people and more that the more my, my personality is actually coming out more so it kind of it grows as a person as well as a personal trainer um, a big thing as well is um, just stand out like stand out is the biggest thing that I find out as well like because a lot of PTs again they kind of don't promote themselves enough and social media is obviously the biggest platform we have now and a lot of people are afraid to put videos up a lot of people are afraid to put posts up and all this shit but you just kind of have to say like who actually gives a fuck what's up there you just have to kind of put up what's there and like I at the start, I was kind of very cautious putting videos up, even coming on video calls with yourselves. It's kind of like, oh fuck, I don't really want to do this shit. Like, but like, like who actually cares? It's going to benefit you, so like, do it. And then after that, it gets comfortable, and then it, things start educating, go start going flying a lot better after that. Then, daily, so you've got yeah. I suppose like if you're scared, that's where the growth is. And then the second one is like, who really gives a fuck? And maybe the third one you're saying there is like, you've got to get out on social media and promote yourself. Yeah. Like. Okay, they're fucking three pieces of advice that are that are deadly. Subs. Now, how have you launched a fucking gym in September and we're now in December and grown it to fifty-five members of two hundred, which is like ten k a month? How 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 have you went from a dude who was making like small money in comparison to now? How have you done it in such a fast time? Well, ascension is the number one thing that actually did help me like big time. Like I said, if any. Even now, I still, I still come to you for advice. Um, it's it's the, it's just it's having the structured. Like uh, you have a fair, everyone has a fair knowledge of how to do things, how to do this, how to do that. I thought I did, but then obviously that's why I reached out because I actually fucking didn't. And that's it's just that having someone to guide you along the way was a big big thing. Like I all I, I said it at the mastermind to Jay last time as well in terms of going up with the business plan with with the layout of the gym. And it was just ripped apart, like. Well, tell like, people. People listening will not know what the fuck happened there. So, like, like yeah. just to give the, the, these guys an idea, you came to us and said, "Right, I want to launch a gym. I'm getting in the ascension." And even though it's a high ticket fucking mastermind, which is a big fucking investment, in your first day, what happened? Well, <laughs> I I done the layout of my gym and went up to the business plan day. That was fine. Showed Jay the layout and showed you the layout as well, Sean. And literally ripped it apart the whole layout. Um, and kind of reset. See that thing you're about to do? Yeah, yeah, don't do that. It's basically, like, basically, okay. <laughs> basically, that was shit. But like, the more, the more you actually explained it though, and even leaving that day, the more you explained that I just knew the flowiness has made so much more sense. And that that's the big thing I learned for Ascension. Like, because I'm on my own with the business, and a lot I know a lot of PTs do be on their own a lot of time. So having that kind of people to talk to and discuss things with is, is something that you miss a lot. So that's why having the guidance there to, to, to push you in the right direction is big. But like I left that day, like after the, the gym being laid out, new structure and all this stuff, and having to make the phone call to, to cancel equipment and get different fucking equipment. We saved you a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. We <laughs> saved you a lot of money. Like actually on day one, Ascension paid for its fucking self. How much did we actually write off your fucking expense? Because you had a load of equipment. We were like, Jay was like, mate, you're not buying all, all that shit there. Let me just draw a line through all this shit here. It must have, be, it must have Jay see you in that one conversation. I don't know fully, but I think it's about two or three K at least. At least. Like, at least. At the very um, least? Hold on, you were going to buy three fucking airlines there? Two grand each? That's six yeah. grand? He missed one though, because I have a dipping station I don't fucking use at all. <laughs> you have a dip station? I haven't used I, I don't know why I got it. I don't know why I got it. <laughs> That's why like putting some dips in your power. You know, we, we talk about this a lot. Like trainers and, and people who are about to launch gyms often do this. Where and then fuck, here's why we know because we made these mistakes ourselves. Like you buy shit because you're like, oh, that'll be deadly. And you, sometimes you're sitting there and you're looking at a gym with three fucking aerodynes, six rowers, you know, all of this stuff that there's not any clients to use this stuff. You, you just there's no need for it whatsoever. And like the money that we saved you, you were able to invest in marketing. And what that did for you was it maxed out your fucking gym. So it really, we were sort of saying, and I think you'd agree, it's like, look, see that money you're going to invest in equipment that's going to sit there idle and have no one on it. Don't buy it now because you don't need it now. What you need to do is you need to invest that money in marketing so that you have the clients who are actually going to give you the income. 
monthly recurring that will in future mean that when you want to grow, you can add it if you like. Because a lot of people do, like, we used to have a fucking boxing ring in this gym, right? Why? Because it was a train set. It was a toy set. It was like something we wanted to play with. The clients were never going to fucking use it, you know? Yeah. Trainers make that mistake. It buys a lot of unneeded, like needless, useless fucking equipment. But they're afraid to invest in actual business advice that could bring a business forward. Do you see that a lot? Yeah, look, even just an example, another example for us would be like we were buying dumbbells at one stage. We bought two and a half to 60. I think it was 60. Yeah. Six grand for a set of dumbbells or more, maybe. You have people, they buy fucking Watson's dumbbells with a loud one of them. I think they're about 10 or 12 grand. It's not worth a fuck to you if you haven't got any people to use them. Yeah. No. I, mean, I think we pulled out the six kilo dumbbell once in the last year to do some goblet squats with them. I had to dust the fucking thing off. Do you know what I mean? Like, what, what is that doing? Nothing. Do you know? So, yeah. Yeah, so we saved you a lot of money in that, in, in, in that thing. And then that was day one. So we saved you a lot of money and showed you what, how to build a gym that was actually going to be able to sustain the clients and yeah. whatever the kind of training you wanted to do. Yeah. How yeah. quick did you get to those 50 members? Well, I'm, only, I'm coming into month four now and straight away. Within, um, like it, I, in the last week or two, I'm after taking on 15 new clients there as well. Um, it just, just constantly, that, that, that's a big thing change from renting out a gym to the new gym now. It's just like, there's messages every day coming in, message every day, whereas last time it was like fucking a ghost town, there was nothing happening. So I think the, obviously the promotions, word them out is a big thing now, they seem to be spreading. And that, that's obviously good feedback as well, because obviously um, people must be happy if the word is out spreading good as well. So yeah, yeah so like that, it, it's in, in coming up to four months now, 55. Um, but like that, even I have a couple of people holding off just to kind of settle, settle the dust down after 15 members after coming on the last week. So there's more and more still wanting to come on as well. So. Fucking did it. And you've actually sent the dude tours to get trained up so you can hire him. Like you've, t- you've taken on staff. How's that working out for you? Yeah, he he good. Good? Finish, yeah, finishing up second week. Yeah, going well. Going well. Brilliant. So now you can grow faster. Yeah, I want another one now. You want another one? Yeah, Fuck. Send, yeah, send yeah. another one down. <laughs> Rock on, man. Rock on. Yeah. Well, that is fucking heavy results. So how has things, like, okay, we've talked about your gym's grown. You've went from, like, 15 members renting space out of a commercial facility to launching your own gym, coming into Ascension. We saved you a load of money. You invested in our advice. You've got leads on top, maxed out your gym, sent a member of staff in to get trained up. You've hired him. You've gone to 55 members. You need more. So, like, you've maxed out your gym within the first, I think, 12 weeks with us. Like, within the first 12 weeks, you maxed it. Yeah, maxed it, yeah, yeah. So how, okay, now that's financially and business-wise, but how, how has that changed things for you on a personal level? Because you said at the start, your message was like, are you sure you want to do this? What's she think now? She hasn't said that since. She hasn't said oh, that. Oh, yeah. yeah she Shut her up, yeah. Yeah, for, for once I'm right, so, so it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Um, oh, fuck, it's going to be right for once, what? Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. Um, yeah, no, like, obviously, when, when you see... Even now, like even saying a year and six months since since I'm actually ever ever leased, even saying that out loud, it's kind of still a bit fucking weird because it feels like a lot longer just because the way things have escalated so quickly, you know. So even just looking back, saying like coming into month four of the gym being open and fifty five members, like it's still kind of like what the fuck happening? What's actually happening here? Like, kind of still like, and, oh no, it's all good. It's all good. So are you going to go back to farming and milking cows and all that sort of shit, or do you reckon this gym things are going to work? Uh, I reckon this gym thing is going to keep going. I think I think it'll be okay. Now we have a gym called FarmFit. <laughs> FarmFit. Yeah, you do farmers walks and farmer <laughs> tire flips and carrying milk shit. Yeah, yeah. what the fuck do you even call it? <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Do a reverse milky. <laughs> <laughs> drive JCBs and shit. Do yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Massey Ferguson, I fucking do it. John Deere. Yeah. Which one? Yeah. Which one? Green one. Green one. Which, which one do you want to go for? Yeah, where are you looking? John Deere. Yeah. 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 Any time we talk to farmers, we have to ask them that question. Yeah. We we need to know this. This is yeah. good. Information. This is information we need to know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, what would you say? Because look, I know a lot of people are, are, are watching this, and they could be <laughs> sitting where you are. In fact, we're, we're talking about four or five people at the minute. Not allowed. Yeah. Definitely, nobody allowed. <laughs> you have the whole 50 for him <laughs> you're in farm fit so uh, like, we're actually speaking to four or five people at the minute who are on the, sort of on a fence like will they get any essential will they not 
What, what would you say to these people who are thinking about investing in a business coach and who were probably where you were, you know, not knowing whether it was the right thing or the wrong thing? What would you say to those people to get them off the fucking fence? Just literally do it because like it's it saved it saved my business. It saved it um so so much, but also it progressed it on so quickly. And like I literally, if someone, uh, it's obviously an investment. It's a, it's an investment, but like. The way it's so far in the fitness industry, what I've learned, if it's with the adverts, if it's with um, going with Ascension, um, to invest, you, you you will get the rewards back. You will you will grow as a person and as a business. So, like, just even though, like, yeah, everyone worries, worries about money at the end of the day, but like, don't worry about it when it comes to this because it is gonna it's gonna reward you big time. So just go for it. Like, don't don't hesitate. Do it now because I actually done it too too late. I think I I rushed that a good bit. So do it, get it before do it before you um you start rushing. You think you've done it too late? You invest yeah. you, you're too long? Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I, I hear that a lot, actually. People always look and say to us, I don't know why the fuck I didn't do this sooner. Like, what was holding me yeah. back? I, I suppose it is the yeah. fear. It is. It's like, I've got this money. I'm going to give it to this dude. Do you know, it, it comes down to this. It's the same as in fitness, isn't it? You know, that your clients are always worried with two things. One, Will it work for me? It's like, you know, if because the first initial thing is like, do I trust this guy? Is he fucking serious? Can he actually get these results? That's the first fear. And if they get over that, they go, fuck yeah. Well, I've heard so many people say it fucking works. But then the next thing is once they trust you, is they, they don't trust themselves. Isn't that it? So like this is the same as weight loss. You know, people go, yeah, I've seen this person who lost that weight. And I, I see like so many people now that you've helped lose weight that I trust you, but now I'm still afraid that maybe I won't get those results. So they either don't trust you, they don't trust themselves. That's always the fear, just like in weight loss. Yeah. But what you know is when you come on the other side is it works if you work it. I mean, yeah. you have a, a coach with a proven track record of getting results. I mean, that's when shit works. Like just in the weight loss, it's like, did you turn up to the fucking gym and did you eat, you know, did you stop eating shit? If you do those two things, the outcome will look after itself. And there's most... It is just a wee bit scary at the start because you have to, yeah. like, I have to invest this money. You're not really investing in a coach or giving it to the coach. You're investing it in your fucking self at the end of the day. Yeah. It's that what if, because if you don't do it, you'll always be wondering what, what was it like? What would what, what it be like? But then if you do go do it, and then there's no looking back. Like I haven't even, haven't even thought a second about it since joining up because I know the minute I've done it, it was the right decision to do. And it's just jump, just go for it. Just go for it. Yeah. It's the big thing to think on. Danny, thanks, Chris. So, what's on the cards for the rest of the day, mate? How's the how's your calendar looking for the day? Uh, I have to go Christmas shopping, <laughs> but uh, in between that, then then just some PTs all evening, and uh, yeah, and then tomorrow morning as well. Sweet. So busy. Yeah, yeah busy enough. Busy enough. Now, now, that's why you kind of open to get ready now. Obviously, two weeks now to the new year, so prepping now, kind of to get ready for new adverts and stuff going out to get more members in and hopefully grow more than yeah. Well, what I love hearing about it, uh, what you said earlier is you've still closed 15 clients this month in December when a lot of people are doing fuck all. Yeah. All our guys in Ascension are closing deals. They're cashing checks and breaking necks. I fucking love hearing that, man. Yeah. This time, you... last, this time last year when I was renting the gym, at this time it was fucking dead. Whereas this time, this this year, it's actually, it's ridiculously busy. And that, that's a big thing that I noticed as well this year. Big thing, big difference. It's your best month. Yeah, best month so far, yeah. No, so you went from like last year having zero income in December going, what the fuck, to now December is your best month. Yeah, yeah. Fucking love it. Love Happy it. days, my man. I think we'll finish in that. Chris, enjoy your crimbo shopping. Thanks a million for coming on. I know everybody listening to this has got some fucking, a ton of writer diners and some great advice. Mate, it's Good great stuff. to hear how, you, how well you've done. Thanks for coming on. I'm Thanks. an extra medium and a ton and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, lads. Cheers, bud. See ya. Bye-bye.